I know I've seen you since the campaign. I can't believe it's been 10 years since the election. That's the weirdest. It's interesting that I'm talking to you today because on the Hill today, they're having confirmation hearings for the new head of the CIA and tortures at the center of that debate, mm -hmm. which is all because of your dad, mm -hmm. right? I mean, really, the reason that we have reformed the torture exercise in America is because of John McCain. Mm -hmm. When he was like speaking in town halls or doing interviews, he always says, like, it's easy to think that life's like, take a guy and like shoot him in the knee and automatically you get all this information. And obviously he knows I think better than anyone, that ultimately people just break at a certain point. Which is his point too. Mm -hmm. and, and his point is that you get bad information. Yeah. <laughs> Take it from me. And people lie. I've been it. And yeah, and break. And, and, and people he, always and he break. Broke, right? Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. And I don't think it's American values to be okay with torture on any level of any kind. I know the counter argument. I still think he's the best expert anyone can find. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, I don't like the idea of us being so morally compromised that we're going to do what terrorists do. Right. So as you know, he's, he didn't just ditch a plane in Vietnam, he's ditched several planes and survived. Five so or something. I was, on a, <laughs> I was on a plane with him one time and there was some turbulence and I got kind of white knuckled and he looked over at me and said, McKinnon, don't worry, you're not going to die on a plane with John McCain. He says that. <laughs> it's, it's like weirdly very reassuring. Well, you know what you should mm -hmm. do then? What? Just keep him on a plane. Yes, <laughs> just, I know. Just let him live on a plane. Yeah, he always <laughs> says that. It's funny, we were on a small plane one time, but there was a lot of turbulence. He said the same thing. And it's yeah. like, it's, it makes not, you feel very reassured. Yeah, not going down on a plane. I was like, you know what, he's right. That's not, not that's, with John McCain. yeah. <laughs> so your dad is in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, and yet we, I still feel his voice in D.C. I mean, he still feels like a presence there, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people are, you know, he's he's released an audio of his book and he has a book coming out, so I think that's probably why people are feeling him too. And he's still here and, you know, tweeting and putting out statements and speaking. And yeah, I mean, I hope his voice stays forever. Yeah. No matter what happens. Yeah. You know, I was sort of more hopeful that there would be more people like him coming up. There's really not that many. Maybe like, Ben Sass is is mm -hmm. a, the person that I like sort of feel comfortable with, at least sort of like morally and ideologically aligned in the same way my dad is. But it makes me sad. It's I I hope he's not um, like a Ted Kennedy line of the Senate time gone by. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not what happens to our country. Right, right. So now it's like as you said during these debates, he's still tweeting. But your sense is that even you know at that time when he does pass, that that you think his presence will continue in Washington. Well, I think that his career so, you know, speaks for itself, 30-something years in the Senate and obviously all his history serving the country beforehand. I think he's going to remain forever and I'm going to make damn fucking sure that his voice stays forever with his institute and, you know, it's been weird to even like, you know, talk about this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people will always remember him no matter what as long as I'm still alive and breathing. Said like a true McCain. <laughs> <laughs>